When I got back from working away, there was a package waiting for me from Jan in Germany, along with some chocolate cake and sausages. I'd like to thank Jan for pointing out the sausages did not need refrigerated. That's good. They're in the fridge now. I shall explore them later. Uh, the Unity sent me here is a Wi-Fi socket. And it's completely dead, he said. Initially, it went very flaky and intermittent, and then uh, it would... Uh, it also, he said that there was an issue with it uh, leaking current to LED lights. But then it stopped working completely, and I've got the hoppy here. And if I plug it into the hoppy, it shows a power of 0.7 watts. There is something active in there. A power factor 0.3, typical 8 milliamps. But when I press this button, I'd expect some to happen. Now, this might just be a dead button, but I'd expect some LEDs or something. Normally with these plugs, when you click the button, the relay will toggle on and off manually, but nothing is happening. I think it's time to open this. It is reassuring that some power is being drawn. I don't know if it's going to be a capacitive dropper or it's going to be... I'm just looking for a screwdriver here. Is it a screwdriver? No, let's use a different one. Let's use this screwdriver. Uh... Is it going to be a capacitive dropper or switch mode power supply? It does say 100 and, uh, sort of 110 to 240 volts, but that doesn't really always mean anything because you also get capacitive droppers that do that and they just basically pass a ton of current at uh, 240 volts versus the 110, much more efficient at 110. Lots more heat dissipation uh, when you run them in the higher voltage. Or if it is a switch mode, will it be the classic capacitor? Will there be a bulgy capacitor inside? We'll find out once I've opened it. Oh. Is this going to disintegrate into pieces? Yes, it is probably going to disintegrate into pieces. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, that's disintegrating into pieces. Here's the power supply circuit board. It's got the it's got the incoming supply. I can see a bridge rectifier down there. Um and it's got the little tiny relay that they normally have. Let's get this out. If we can get it out. Oh the whole lot comes out. That's pretty good. So I shall zoom down in this. I shall unplug, because there's little plugs here. Oh, maybe they're not little plugs. They may just be little circuit board headers. Do these not unplug? I don't think they do. Maybe they do. Hold on. Ooh, they don't want to come out. Okay, tell you what. Uh, is it worth taking this off? There's no LCD display, so I don't have a zebra strip to worry about. Or zebra, if you prefer. Spelt with a Z. All right, there's a little Wi-Fi module. Contains all the processing power, little voltage regulator, perhaps. Transistor to switch a relay, little clicky button. Um, and any LEDs? Yes, there's an LED above and below, so you'd expect some LED activity. Well, tell you what, the power supply, this looks like the output capacitor, and it's not bulgy. But tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Uh, Tack some wires across that, and we'll stick it on a meter, and we'll plug it in, and we'll see if we get voltage across the output here. One moment, please. Okay, I've tapped the leads onto it. I've not plugged it in yet. I thought I'd wait till sure. Well, wait to share the moment with you. So I've connected a cheapy meter. This is just a generic meter. I use it because it's got crock clips on it as standard. Well, that's my standard crock clip meter. This is not powered, so I'm going to plug this in here. Uh, make sure everything is safe and away from anything. And then I'm going to plug this in, making sure, double-checking everything's clear. Plug it in. We're getting 5 volts. So that's not great. It suggests that maybe there's a slight issue with the control circuitry module, because that is a per perfectly acceptable voltage. Um, I wonder if there's another supply. I wonder what the relay is. Right, tell you what, I'm going to unplug this again. For shaved A, and this will be charged up. I shall unplug the thing. Um, the relay, let me just grab, this is their secondary supply, I don't think there is, I think it's just going to be 5 volts a lot. 
the relay it says 5 volt DC so it is being powered directly from this but uh, nothing is happening on here we'll tell you what uh, I shall just hotwire this with 5 volts so I can operate on it safely and then we'll measure some voltages on here one moment please while I set that up so I've now got this powered from my bench supply at just below 5 volts so it doesn't uh, cause too much current to go through the feedback circuitry. There is a bit of feedback circuitry if it's too simple, if it's like a zener diode and the opto-isolator. If you set the voltage too high in the secondary, it can actually dr try driving that because it's not switching off the, the sort of supply of current through the transformer. It can actually damage the sort of feedback circuitry. So let's bring in the big daddy meter here. Well, not the super big daddy meter, but a pretty good meter nonetheless for my applications. And I see this as a 3.3 volt regulator. So let's uh, untangle the leads for a start. Big long leads, they're huge leads. And we'll probe about and see, are we getting 3.3 volts here? Because uh, it is drawing about 90 milliamps. I don't know where that's going. We're getting 3.3 volts. That's not so great. That does kind of allude that something has gone horribly wrong. Tell you what, let's bridge the little switch. Well, let's actually, you know, let's force a complete and utter reset just by holding that button down for oodles of time. So let's uh, hold it down for a good length of time. But I would have expected to see LEDs flashing and blinking. I'm not seeing an awful lot going on here. I'm, I have a feeling that uh, something here has failed. This little receiver module has actually died inside. Could be my imagination. That feels quite warm, actually. That might be a clue. Mm, but then it's only about 90 milliamps at 3.3 volts. It shouldn't be. Maybe I'm just imagining it. You know, it's like... Mm. I'm going to reflow these soda joints. Um and see if I can get any life out of this. One moment, please. And the joints have been reflowed. Some tests have been done. Sadly, it's a fail. Uh, I'm getting 3.3 volts to the little module here. All the connections seem good. Uh, it's just not doing anything. Well, it, it is actually getting slightly warm, uh, but nothing really radical. And if I bridge these two connections here, it brings the little red LED on and the relay, but everything is dead. The green LED, but I presume it's green, is controlled from this when, it's, when it boots up. Um, and it, when it drives this transistor, it, it doesn't just drive the relay, but it also drives that red LED. So I'm getting the 3.3 volt to the processor. Everything's there that should be making it work. But I'm getting the feeling that the, the main brain of this unit, which is a little uh, RF receiver board, is dead. So that means the next thing I want to do is actually get a cover off that and see what's underneath and see if there's anything obvious under there. One moment, please. The cap is off, removing some of the ground track for the process. The little chip here, it's an ESP chip. It's running at about uh, 30 degrees Celsius, which is, I think that's too hot for that chip. It could be wrong, though. And the regulator as well is uh, showing a bit of heat just because it's dealing with that extra dissipation. I'm not really sure what current an ESP module would normally run at. The little uh, resonator at the side is looking very cool, but that's only because it's a reflective surface and there is presumably a serial memory chip the look of it. Uh, let me just actually tell you if that's a serial memory chip or not by uh, taming this back for a start. And then looking through a suitable magnifying device. EM25Q08A for the memory-ish device here. Um, and the little chip, the, the little module, is an ESP8266. Hold on. What is that? It's really... ESP8266EX. Hmm. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure that the, the problem here is the little microcontroller here on this. I, I think it should be fairly low power and, well, it's notably warm to the touch. So that's what's caused this to fail. It's, uh, I'm not sure what has triggered that. Uh, it could be that when someone's pushed the button, electrostatic discharge has occurred from their finger 
and has gone over to that. Or it might have been some transient finding its way through the power supply, although it does look isolated. So my guess here is an electrostatic discharge or just a natural failure of this. It's a shame. It's wiped out a product and it's, it means you can't really just replace component to repair it. But uh, having said that, it's just, you know, it doesn't look a hugely expensive device. So the answer here is, it, well, this has failed, it can't be repaired. That's annoying. I hate things that I can't repair. But there we go. It happens from time to time.